Hello guys, this is NHL Eric, and I'm going to be doing a sports editing tutorial for you today. Um, This is just for being great followers. Thanks guys. Uh, we're coming close on 4K. Hopefully we can get there. So, for the tutorial, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a skin and go to Denoise. Topaz and Denoise. You guys get Topaz. They're great plugins for Photoshop. And they work really good for sports. And this skin is on the fly, so may stop for a little bit. So I clicked on uh, strongest right here and this is the denoise. It gets rid of the details, makes it denoise. And now we're going to take the adjust color red and blue and make them both minus one. I like to scroll up in the navigator by the face because that's what most people look at. And now um, once I've scrolled up I like to turn the adjust highlight down too. If it's too highlighted, sometimes it'll change it, sometimes it won't. It uh, really depends on the picture. The strength, I like to play with it until it is the most denoise without getting rid of the details. So um, maybe for this picture, it's about 2,000 pixels, so I'm going to put it at uh, 65. For some, like, 3,000 pictures, you, uh, pixel pictures, you can put them up to, like, around 80, but... Um, a lot of times you won't get those good pictures. They won't be in the right position or just they won't look good. So since it is a fairly large image, Genoise will take a while after you've clicked OK. And this skin, like I said, I think I said before, um, I'm making it on the fly. So I may stop for a little bit. I think I said that. If I didn't, uh, I'm on the fly. So like I said, Big image may take a while. And we're going to be playing around a lot. And you don't want to use settings every time. Because each picture is different. has different tones. So you want to play with the settings. You may find one on a, a, a reveal page or something. But always play with those settings. And nothing's really exact. So I have to click back into Photoshop. Because it goes into Finder. For some reason. And uh, I'm going to scroll up. And zoom in. I don't know, it's just a pet peeve for me to be zoomed out all the way. I like to be zoomed in a lot. And uh, now we're going to go to Topaz Adjust. We're going to go to, and I, like I said before, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to go into the stylized collection. And it's going to load all of them. So, And this is the big collections. So it'll take a while. And like I said, a big image. So I'm going to scroll down. To cycletic. Oh, there it is. I have no clue how to say that. I think it's cycletic. And now we're going to go to details. I think put the strength down because sometimes it brings it way too much. And like I, I'll fit click just to see the whole image. Um, detail pulls to uh, one. Keep it normal. Threshold, I always like to put that at zero. Um, just pet peeve for me. Uh, adaptive saturation, I put that at zero. It changes the colors up a lot, which I don't like. And then I'll put saturation at one. And the saturation... Or if it's too much, you can move it down like that sometimes. Images are different. So now I'm going to click apply. And if it doesn't go right away, you're going to have to click it again. And then it's going to bring up a little clock. Then you know it's applying and percentages, how far it's done. And now we're going to go to adaptive exposure. And I'm going to bring both adaptive exposure and the regions up just for a little bit more details that we didn't get with our first filter. And we can also bring the detail boost up because, like I said, we're going to get a lot of details in this. And let's click OK. So adjust is usually pretty quick and uh, it usually works good. So now we're going to go into clean. Clean will bring out the details and really sharpen them up. I like clean, some people don't, but I really like it. So we're going to go into the stylized edges collection. This is in Till Plans 3.10. Uh, so this is a different layout than 3 that I think only comes with Windows. So we're going to click curly smooth. We're going to take the threshold and put it down to zero. I'm going to put the strength to three, the accent to five. 
you know, let's put the strength of two. And that looks really good. Like I said, the details are sharp. And it looks, um, very nice. A little <laughs> nice. So, now we are going to go back into Photoshop. After it goes in the Finder, if it does that. Oh, what's this? Screenshot. What the heck? Alright. I've never seen that happen, so just trust me. My computer's not glitching, hopefully. So, I like I said, I'm going to zoom in. And you can see there are some spots that are, like, odd colored. So now we're going to go uh, put the saturation at, like, lower than normal so you can see that it's gone. Now we're going to... Like, the colors are gone. We're going to hit Control-A, and with white, we're going to hit Delete. And uh, we're going to use our round, n normal circle brush that comes with Photoshop. And I have a ton of brushes, so this is going to take a long time. And, uh, wow, this is taking pretty long. Usually never takes this long. Alright, there we go. And I like to use the one with zero hardness. And about that size, I don't know what that is, 39 pixels. And I'm just going to brush around the crazily color colored areas until I have those gone. And I'm going to reduce the opacity so it doesn't look like a blocky line that's changing the colors. And um, more like a faded look. And let me play with it a little bit more, the opacity. I think that looks nice. Uh, let's see, I'm going to actually go back, you know what, I'm going to go back into adjust and add a little bit more details, I don't think even the second time that I added a filter was enough, I'm going to add a little bit more. So you can do this with any picture, just add in the HDR collection a dynamic pop. So we're going to go down, to, I'm just going to go to finishing touches because it's a bit too much. And turn the transparency from 0 to somewhere from 20 to 5. And you can see the details are much better. I have no clue what that thing is. It just keeps on popping up. So, the hue and saturation adjustment layer did a little bit, but we still have that crazy look at the bottom. So, I'm going to create another one because it's really yellow. And the other one was sort of yellow. So I'm going to desaturate it all the way. And I like to use a big brush at first. And then the parts that I messed up on, I like to go around with a smaller brush after that. I feel it's a bit quicker and easier to work with when I do that. So I'm just going to keep on getting every spot. You can see I'm messing up in some areas. And now I'm going to... Like I said, use a smaller brush. And I'm going to hit X just to toggle my colors. And I always like to stay with black and white. And uh, just keep on color correcting until you finally get a look that you like. And if you get too much, you can just hit X again and keep on playing. So now, once we have our hue saturation mask, both of them, we are going to go and, why can't I, alright, we're going to go and we're going to get have it fit the screen, now we're going to mask, so, a lot of, since I'm running quick time to record my screen, masking will take a while, and my technique that I like to do is just, um, mask around the player, I don't like, Cutting out the background and making a duplicate. I, I don't know. I just don't like it. And uh, I'm going to pause the video and uh, st start it again. So, uh, like, here I am and uh, done with my selection. I'm going to go to the Refine Edge tool. And this is just a bunch of uh, fine tuners to make it look the best it can be. And if you see you've missed a spot, you can just go hit cancel. See, I missed somewhere. Up near his face, and uh, since most people, like I said, people look at the face, I'm gonna go and uh, make it the best selection possible. 
and I like to put the smooth up to 35, somewhere around there, and I'm gonna I'll put it to a new layer. And just click OK. Um, like I said, 35, and then I had 37, but it's fine. So I'm going to merge all three of those, and you may have missed spots on the inside, so I'm just going to go and uh, get them again. So now that we have des now we're going to desaturate the background, and our selection is done, and uh, we have uh, another layer extruded from the background. We're going to add a gradient at the bottom, a white one. So I'm going to pull out from the side, have rulers in. And um, once I have uh, the ruler on, I'm going to add a gradient from the bottom. And um, this is just mostly give a white look at the bottom. It just fades in and out. I, don't, I just like it. I don't know why I add it. Sorry for the pause there, I have to talk for a little bit. <laughs> and um, now I am going to add some brushing. So I'm going to go pick a color. Um, I'm not, I don't like sampling the jersey, I just like going with what I think looks good. And uh, hit B or just click the brush tool. I'm going to add these grungy halftone brushes. I'll leave them in the description below. And... Uh, Halftone brushes, great things to use. I love it. Uh, haven't used it yet on uh, NHL artwork. And uh, I've been using them a lot, just haven't posted anything with it. So I will just keep on creating new layers and uh, moving around uh, my brushing. Because uh, I don't like too much, nor do I like too little. I want my brushing to look as good as can be. So, once I have one color done, I'll do the other color. I think I'll do a little bit more orange. Or, I guess not. Um, so, I'm going to use some blues on the other side. Now, if I see that my brush doesn't look good, I can go into the brushes uh, little toolbar. You can find in a view. And I'm going to flip it, the flip the X, which is the X and Y axis. You probably learned that school if you haven't then you shouldn't be editing because you're probably five years old and um i'm just gonna keep on erasing and brushing until this, i see what looks good and you always want to make sure it's the best you can be i mean like if you're like and hey, that looks good just you can always make it better no matter what i mean like you can zoom in pixel by pixel and erase what you want, what you want to keep. So always try to have a good combination of colors when doing this, but not too much of an overlap. And uh, usually I'll just hit uh, B and E to erase it. And you can see right here all this overlay stuff with uh, oranges on the bottom and the blues on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control on the layer, on the blue layer and then delete everything on those bottom orange layers so it doesn't overlay too much. Let me erase a little bit more. So this is um, the brushing that part of my tutorial and now I'm going to merge them all and put them in overlay mode. As you can see, it does not look that good. When I put it over, like, I'm going to make a duplicate, put it in normal, and then reduce the opacity a bit. And like I said, we're going for a grungy look, so I'm going to add a grunge texture. I'm going to go into my finder. I'm going to look for a certain texture. Um, I'm just going to search up grunge because I have a ton of textures. And then just scroll through what I like. Ooh, which one? This one right here. Grunge Texture by Dark Rose 42 Stack JPEG. I'll uh, leave a link below for the texture. Uh, it's probably by a guy named Dark Rose, thanks to him. 
So um, since this is like a vertical image, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and now that's horizontal, I'm going to fill it up so it uh, fills the whole thing. And the great thing about this one texture right here is if you add some good gradient maps, you can look at like a ice texture. So I'm going to put it in uh, overlay mode and just uh, keep on playing around so it looks nice. Um, I don't want those whites to pop out in the corner. <sighs> Alright, so I'm going to put a white to a black gradient map. Put it in uh, reverse, since it's black to white. And I'm going to put it in overlay with the opacity around 80. Now I'm, we're going to add our watermark. And uh, I like to use the font Bebas. It's the same thing as Bebas New if you can't find Bebas. I just like this one. A lot of people use it. So I'm going to type in uh, Velocity GFX because that's my all sports one. And if you, you see the letters are really spaced up because the AV is at 100. And I like it like that. I've just recently discovered it. If you don't like this look, you can go to the character toolbar. And you can go see that AV, VA. And you can put it at 0. Sometimes I'll even put it down to like minus 75. But I like it at 100. I'm just going to move it over to the side there, and I'm going to put it in overlay. I'll make a duplicate. And uh, there you have it. It's a very nice sports edit. Um, really easy if you know what you're doing. If you're new to Photoshop, play around with it and try to get the best image you can. Um, if it doesn't look great, that's fine, but always try to make the best image you can. So, uh, Thanks for watching, guys. If I'm gonna upload a lot more tutorials, if um, just comment and leave the link of which uh, design you want me to do another tutorial on, and uh, hopefully I can get it out. And uh, I'm not gonna reveal like all of my designs and all, um, but like some tips, pointers, and uh, maybe some full tutorials like this. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video.